Hey, I'm Mason, and today I am meeting with Jonathan Gold. He's a food critic for the Los Angeles Times, and he's the first food critic ever to win a Pulitzer Prize, an award for newspaper journalism. Now let's go and meet him and hope that we get something good to eat as well. Hello, I am Mason. It is very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. I'm Jonathan. Nice to meet you. Could you tell me a bit about who you are and what you do? I am the restaurant critic for the Los Angeles Times and I go to restaurants and I write about them. <laughs> now what is your mindset going into a restaurant that you're about to review? Well, I'm looking for a place that's going to blow me away, that's going to serve me something I've never had before, that's going to get me really excited. And it can do that in a number of different ways. What are those types of ways? Uh, one, the chef can be imaginative, can do something I've never seen anyone do before. The place where we are now is uh, Gala Getza. And this was the first restaurant in Los Angeles to serve the food of Oaxaca, a state in central Mexico where a lot of the cooking is the same way that it was before Columbus came to America. I heard that you would use disguises and burner phones to review restaurants. Why is that? There is, or until very re until very recently was a tradition in the United States of anonymity among restaurant critics that we're supposed to go into a place and have exactly the same experience as everyone else. And I have friends like Ruth Reichel who used to be the restaurant critic for the New York Times and the editor of Gourmet would actually dress up differently and have a makeup artist put stuff on her face and wear different glasses and things. Um, I've n never done that. Um, because I don't, I don't think it works. I mean, they, the people who own the restaurants know who the people writing about them are, for the most part. It, it's probably more glamorous to dress up, but. <laughs> <laughs> you do not know what to expect here. <laughs> It'll be delicious, though, I promise. How are you guys doing? Good, Great. how are you? Pretty good day. I'm offering some agro shoppers, Mexican style. It's made with uh, tomatoes, onion, and jalapeno, but that's really spicy. It's really good. You want to try something different? You want to love it. And then come back. Thank you. Wow. Have you had grasshoppers before? No, not at all. Never in my life. In, in central Mexico, gra grasshoppers are a thing. And they're, they're, when you eat them, it's mostly crunch and a little bit of a smoky flavor. You don't get, it, it's not, it doesn't taste weird at all. <laughs> and there's nothing weird about it except, of course, it is. So what I like to do is to like take a, a spoonful. Try, try not to think about it too. <laughs> what do you think? That is amazing. Oh my gosh. That is better than I thought. I like how the lime just adds to it. Yeah. Makes it kind of zesty. Oh, I saw grasshoppers. I was like, aren't those supposed to be in the ground? <laughs> <laughs> I would love your job. I bet you would. <laughs> I feel happy to have it every day. The single best thing about my job is, is going around and getting to explore Los Angeles every day. It's such a big city. You know, it goes, you can drive a hundred miles and in a straight line and you're, all, you're pretty much still in it. And I, I'm always doing something new every day. That's also a good thing about being a newspaper person in general, is that every, every day is different. Every day you're writing about something new. How were you growing up as a kid? Sort of a nerdy kid. I, I, I read a lot. I spent a lot of time watching the Dodgers. I practiced the cello. I mean, I, I never thought that I wanted to do anything in my life besides play the cello. Well, now I can say I've tried grasshopper. Yes. <laughs> can you cook yourself? Yeah, I can cook. Really? What's your specialty? I cook a lot of uh, Italian food um, because Los Angeles has the best Asian food in the country and it has the best food from Latin America in the country. So, But if I want great Italian food, sometimes I got to cook it myself. <laughs> 
A curious question. Sure. If you had to choose one color that describes you, what would that color be? That's an interesting question. Pink. Pink's a good one. <laughs> Why is that? Um, well, I'm just thinking that because I always buy pink toothbrushes because I know that nobody else in my family will ever be caught dead with it. <laughs> but it's a perfectly good color and it's easy on the eye. Do you ever feel nervous about uh, going into a restaurant and reviewing them knowing that you could literally make or break that restaurant? If you're a film critic and you give a bad review to the new Batman movie, <laughs> Warner Brothers is going to do okay, right? I mean, they'll open for business. But sometimes when you write a really negative review of a restaurant, the restaurant will close. And if it's important to do it for some reason, I'll do it and I have closed restaurants, but I don't take pleasure in it, and I'm very, very careful about it. Now, what advice do you have to kids like me who may look up to you for inspiration? And if you're interested in food, try different things. Maybe go to the kitchen and take down some of the spices and mix like just a little bit of it with maybe some cream cheese and put it on a cracker and taste it. and try to learn the difference between the taste of clove and of cardamom and of rosemary and of thyme. You'll be surprised how easy it is, but so many people don't take the time to do that. How about we both take a bite on three? Sure. One, One two, two, three. three. Mm. Potatoes and chorizo. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that was delicious. Thank you for this. This was amazing. I'm so glad we got to eat together, Mason. <laughs> yes, sir. It was awesome being able to meet Jonathan Gold and figuring out what it's like to be a highly acclaimed food critic. Well, I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. And until next time, I'll see you later.